We are incredibly fortunate this year that uh, we were able to uh, convince the Open Cascade team to come and join us in the uh, in the hardware. Uh, as you know, Open Cascade is the foundation of a lot of the tools that we've been talking about today. How we interact with each other and exchange our and exchange our models in many ways. And so, um, without further ado, we uh, get to hear um, some of the details behind what Open Cascade is doing these days. From uh, uh, from okay. <laughs> Alexander Maolichev. <laughs> no, I got it really bad. I'm so, I'm so sorry about this. Okay. Okay, hello. Uh, my name is Alexander Maolichev. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, in this talk, uh, I'm going to present some key features of the kernel for newcomers and highlight some new features which have been added recently for more experienced users. The first question is, does somebody hear about uh, Open Cascade technology? Raise your hands up. Almost one, th one third, one half. Okay. What is Open Cascade technology? Uh, Open Cascade technology is a geometric modeling library. It provides a set of high-level topological operators and low-level uh, geometric algorithms. It uses well-known boundary representation approach uh, to store underlying data. Boundary representation means that uh, a three-dimensional model is uh, constructed by a set of faces. They bound a model. Faces are bounded by edges. Edges are bounded by vertices. Uh, some development facts. The most important thing here is a permissive LGPO license. And this is why I'm here, of course. Uh, moreover, there is a special exception which is taken from LGPL 3.0 allowing to deal with object code incorporating material from uh, header files. Some code in templates and headers, etc. The OpenCascade technology is uh, uh, written in C++ and available on all major platforms. Uh, the actual master branch has nearly 2.5 million lines of code. It's quite a huge framework some technical details. Uh, foundation classes are responsible for low-level functionality like smart pointers, collector, collections, uh, maybe some numerical methods. Modeling data defines the set of representable objects. In general, uh, we follow the step standard ISO 10303. So almost everything that you have in step from a modeling point of view, you can model this stuff using our modeling data directly or using some conversion techniques. Uh, modeling algorithms, data exchange and visualization will be discussed a bit later. Uh, application framework is a set of tools and methods for rapid application development. It allows to build your own data model using undo, redo and transaction mechanism with some kind of hierarchical database. Of course, uh, all this stuff uses our uh, classes, our structures, so this is our way to build uh, uh, build applications. Uh, Test Harness application, it's a TCL-based console application which reveals OCT functionality. Almost everything that we have on a C++ level uh, is reflected somehow on the TCL level. Uh, this application supports a plugin mechanism so you can write your own uh, commands to extend its functionality. We usually use it to test, to debug, to analyze, to prototype. Uh, it's some kind of, how to say, testing tool for us. Uh, geometric <coughs> modeling. Well, the set of geometric algorithms includes uh, intersection, projection, uh, approximation, intersection, uh, interpolation algorithms. For instance, interpolation algorithm uh, can accept uh, tangents or parameterization to deal with a curve's form. You know that uh, there are infinite number of ways to pass a curve for the given set of points. There should be a criterion to define one curve from this set. Uh, another example of geometric algorithm is presented on the slide. Here you can see the projection of uh, curve to the surface uh, using direction. Uh, 
I have prepared this example using Dora TCL based application, so let's take a look. Here we have a block uh, constructing our inputs. Uh, after that, we have to convert geometric objects to their topological counterparts according to the common definition, which projects a uh, curve on the surface. We convert them. Here, here we perform the projection. What to project, where to project, projection direction, here it is, and uh, their variable name to store the result. After that, we can display uh, inputs and output on the screen. Here, you can see our standard console, which is called Draw. And here, we can launch this script. And here is the result. The set of topological algorithms includes uh, Boolean algorithm, fillet, offset, skinning, thickening, chamfering, maybe something else. Once again, there is a special demo demonstrating this functionality. So let's take a look. Uh, this time we are going to uh, load model from the hard disk drive and other argument will be constructed manually it will be just a, a truncated cylinder after that we will uh, perform common operation volume uh, display inputs clear scene and display the result so okay Our input cylinder and well known NC101 model. And let's see the result. Here it is. It's a result of common. Well, visualization is vital for a successful modeling. We live in a three-dimensional world, <laughs> or at least we feel it three-dimensional. Visual feedback gives understanding of what is going on with your paths, assemblies. Uh, it is helpful to debug problems of VRAP data. Our visualization engine is capable of displaying uh, three-dimensional models, dimensions, relations, and other kinds of engineering Data. It uses state-of-the-art accelerating techniques like uh, bounding volume hierarchy to achieve high interactivity and frame rate on huge models. Uh, you know that there are two major paradigms in visualization, rasterization and ray tracing. The Open Cascade technology supports both of them. Uh, usually ray tracing is used uh, to produce uh, photorealistic images. In our previous demo, we have seen a uh, rasterization pipeline. Now it's time to, to get some understanding about uh, ray tracing. Our next script, once again, load model, uh, prepare scene. Here we want to set a background color. Uh, we want to enable lights to see reflections and shadows. We want to set the material to see reflections and shadows. And here we want to enable ray tracing mode and uh, enable shadows, reflections, and anti-aliasing. Here it is. You can see shadows, reflections, And this script is quite small. 
For instance, you can add textures, materials, etc. So to make it really photorealistic. Just a small demo. Well, data exchange is crucial to supporting a third party software. Uh, ask yourself how many cut software do you use every day? Personally, I keep open three or four programs. In my opinion, it's almost impossible to imagine a software that does the entire job. So we have to uh, data exchange with our software. Our state and IGES translators are able to deal not only with uh, uh, with parts and assemblies, but they can deal with metadata such as colors, layers, names. Uh, popular mesh formats like STL are also supported. Uh, other representation schemes like drawings, voxels, point clouds, wireframe. Uh, can be constructed from internal VDAP structure, but there are no built-in translator for them. Uh, once again, there is a dedicated demo demonstrating how we can uh, create a model, colorize faces, and save it on a disk and check it in some other software. This time we are not going to use a predefined script. The Open Cascade technology has some built-in samples. Uh, this time we are going to use built-in sample. Just type run sample. Here we have a pencil model. It contains two solids. We will see it. And after that we can write a step file. What to store, where to store. and we can open it in, in other software, for instance, in FreeCAD. That's it. Yeah, well, I know that FreeCAD uses our step translator. <laughs> <laughs> but there is no good free uh, step reader, unfortunately. Well, there are some nice features uh, which have been added in the recent, uh, late in the latest releases, and I would like to attract your attention to, uh, to them. 7.0. Uh, we migrated from our own build system to the well-known uh, CMake build system. Uh, I have to be polite here, but when I entered to the company several years ago and I faced with our build system, well, I can say it was unfriendly to newcomers. <laughs> I have to be polite. But uh, CMake offers uh, the unified pipeline which is fruitful for developers and the community. Uh, our step translator was extended by uh, application protocol 242. Uh, which deals with the product and manufacturing information, so you can write and read this kind of data. 7.1 uh, The Open Cascade technology usually uses uh, bounding boxes to perform fast intersection checks. Uh, sometimes, especially in case BISP lines, these axis aligned bounding boxes they are much bigger than nominal geometry. And there's a problem. For instance, when we, uh, when we can uh, compute bounding box once and cache it, it's much uh, more interesting to build optimal bounding box than uh, build an uh, ordinary bounding box. Uh, unfortunately, we sacrificed performance for that, of course. Uh, calculation of uh, optimal bounding box requires more efforts. Uh, IS manipulator class uh, suits for interactive transformation of objects on the scene. Once again, there is a dedicated demo for that. Let's take a look. Once again, we load model, we display it, 
and we create a manipulator and attach it to the model. That's all. So we can move along free uh, global axis x, y, z. We can rotate. We can scale. We can scale. That's it. Uh, Seven point two. The compiled header support significantly improves compilation speed. Uh, on my desktop, it reduces compilation from 15 minutes to 10 minutes. I think it is worth to enable it when you don't want to modify your It's uh, fruitful for community, I think. Uh, partition operator is a special kind of boot of the boot algorithm which uh, adds all splits. Uh, of the first argument to the result, but it doesn't include anything from the second argument to the result. Uh, it's hard to explain it, so let's take a look. Here, once again, the same model, and we want to slice it using se set of parallel faces. <coughs> After that, the block uh, related to partition operator construction, displaying Inputs and result. So let's take a look. Ah, sorry. Need to launch and stop once again. to clear my pair of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. So actually, initially we have uh, one solid and we want to slice it in a, into a several pieces by this set of faces. We clear, we display result. Here you can see some uh, lines on the screen. They mean uh, that we have several uh, solids in underlying model, and we can check it. MBS number of shapes. So initially we have one solid. In the result, we have nine solids. Seven point three uh, special algorithm uh, for uh, features removal for feature removal was added. This algorithm can remove features like gaps, holes, protrusions, uh, fillets, chamfers. Also, this uh, release introduces oriented bounding box. The idea is the same as a uh, optimal bounding box. And once again, I have. I have a demo for that functionality. Here we have a model. It is axis aligned. So we want to rotate it along Z axis to 45 degrees to make it uh, to make axis aligned bounding box bigger. And after that we can construct uh, axis aligned bounding box and oriented bounding box and after that we can display inputs and outputs <coughs> yeah. so you can see that the bigger one is uh, axis aligned and uh, yellow one is uh, oriented one it's not absolutely optimal because it uses triangulation to build it, so it depends on uh, triangulation quality. But it's much better in this case. 
nevertheless. And our latest, our actual release, 7.4, uh, we added two new mesh formats, GLTF and Pulch. Uh, well, actually, the Open Cascade technology supports four mesh formats, STL, VR, ML, GLTF, and Pulch. Well, this set is not big, but it reduces the number of third-party components of, in your software. You know, this annoying set of third-party components in your software, it can be extremely huge. Uh, and we have finished meshing over full. Now our meshing algorithm, I mean big app mesh incremental mesh class, uh, produces much more reliable and robust result. They, there you can see some useful links on the slide. They contain instructions on how to compile, download, and run the software. There is a dedicated form to ask questions as well. If it is what you are interested in, if it is what you are looking for, then give it a try. Well, it's questions time. What is the difference between uh, commercial kernels and the free kernel? You have to have evaluated them side by side for uh, different operations. Unfortunately, we don't have an access for that, for other kernels. Uh, the only thing we can uh, say here that our uh, step and address translators, they, I can say that they better, they should be better because we are interested in uh, step and address formats because this is our way to uh, communicate with other, other software. Parasolid, ACES, and other kernels, they have their internal formats and they do not want to go outside of them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was wondering if you also have a part on like to use on Open Cascade on the web or if it's like and how you do that or if you plan to do that. How do we use Open Cascade on the web? If it's possible, yes. Uh, yes, we have some uh, experiments in that area, and uh, the usual way is to add some bindings to the C++ libraries using uh, JavaScript languages and call just C++ code. Yeah, but I assume that I want to like uh, visualize a, a solid in the web. I don't, I don't uh, have you the can uh, go to our website, to the comp I mean company's website, you can see some uh, model on the web. So somebody has finished this job, but it's not what my task. Yeah, okay. I was wondering if you like have like a so port, like, technically it's possible. Then. We have this experience, but yeah. how it is done, I don't know. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's, it's possible. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, somebody has finished this job, you can go to our website. You can see that three-dimensional model is displayed on the screen. Okay. Can you explain the difference between Open Cascade and Open Cascade Community Edition? Yeah. What is the difference between Open Cascade and Open Cascade Community Edition? Uh, Open, Co Open Cascade Community Edition is a fork of Open Cascade. Uh, uh, several people started it uh, around 2010, and uh, they were not uh, satisfied with our uh, development progress. Since this time, we uh, came more open to the community, so Open Cascade Community Edition uh, still uses Open Cascade uh, 6.9.1. But our actual version is 7.4, so almost all users switch to the Open Cascade uh, official release, let it be. But it's the same license, right? Yeah, LGPL. Can you tell us a little bit about what the uh, next big thing will be for Open Cascade? Is it for customers, for performance, anything else? Uh, rod uh, the question is roadmap for the future, yeah? yeah. Well, uh, here uh, we are going to improve our visualization engine significantly. Actually, we have finished uh, physically based rendering and materials uh, redesign. Uh, from a algorithm and modeling point of view, there is no such a fixed 
uh, Rob Mott will have to stop. Um, <laughs> is the open cascade stuff mainly driven by the company itself or also external contributors? Um, do we have external contributors yet? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, we have. Uh, formerly, we have nearly 100, but active with something between 10 and 20. Uh, <coughs> question about retracing. Uh, what do we display on the screen? Yeah, good, good question. Uh, in visualization, in this stuff, we just we uh, retrace that triangle. So you have to build a mesh before usage. Uh, yeah, I know this problem. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. The problem yeah. For the, the question is, uh, do we have a, a mirror, mirror on some public uh, website? Uh, actually, no. But we are working on this. <laughs> we are going to use GitHub. Yeah. My colleagues say that uh, we are going to <laughs> publish a mirror on the GitHub. Okay. <laughs> so I have a question of the, uh, the the process of a new developer coming in to be able to contribute um, is that documented um, somewhere if someone is watching this talk where would they where would they look to find out how to get involved in your project uh, the question is how to involve to the project yeah? yeah here you can see the first link it uh, has information about how to be involved does everyone still have to fax something to France? Uh, unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Some legal reasons. Okay. But we are working on this process and trying to optimize it. Okay. Are, are you working on a contributor license agreement? Uh, uh, right, right now, yeah. Much, okay. Yeah. Okay. We are working on that stuff. Okay. But actually, you have to sign it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, it, it is uh, currently as it is, but we're trying to simplify the workflow. Uh, there's time for maybe one more question. Yeah. So are there, are there any plans to make C++ API a bit more uh, friendly to use for more than C++? Since I want the API to be uh, coming to use. Uh, the question is, uh, can we replace our old API by a model C++ API? Yeah. Uh, the answer is no, because all CAD renders support non C++ 11 compilers. So we cannot switch. We can, uh, and we wrap them by some macro, for instance, standard overwrite, just a macro for C++ overwrite. But in general, we cannot uh, drop all this uh, stuff. Okay, thank you.